Hey Tommy, how much would you pay for a car that can take you and your family from 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds and get this, to a top speed of 189 miles an hour? Well Dad, I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about the car in front of us, which is the new 2024 Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. This is the top dog version of the new Cayenne with the huge engine, all the performance goodies. In this video, we're going over the outside, the inside, and taking it for a drive. Yeah, we're here in Pasadena, and Porsche was kind enough to lend us this and go take it for a ride. Now, of course, this directly competes with cars like the BMW X6M, but more indirectly competes with cars like the Lamborghini Urus, and of course, the Audi, what's the Audi one? The RS Q8, and of course, those cars do share components with um, the platform that this Porsche Cayenne rides on. But for 2024, the Cayenne has been updated, and it's not just a little bit of venting here and there, a couple new screens. It's been heavily, heavily, heavily refreshed, the new E3.2 generation of Cayenne. Um, I mean, it's it's a pretty dramatic change, guys, over the, the current model. Not only visually, you know, we've got more aggressive headlights, we got this power bulge in the hood, um, we got the, in this Turbo GT model, the number of vents and gills and fins in the front is crazy. So you've got radiators and coolers all throughout the front end. You've got this low front splitter that actually passes through to the ground. You can see my hand back there for a, some additional aerodynamics. And underneath the hood, we've got a, uh, um, a revamped four liter twin turbo V8 with 650 horsepower, 600 and almost 630 pound feet of torque. I mean, this is serious horsepower in a family hauling SUV. Yeah, it's made it to an eight-speed automatic. And as you guys know, um, the Cayenne first came out back in 2002. And if the Boxster saved the brand, this made the brand rich because who would have thunk people actually wanted a Porsche where they could stuff their kids in the back without having to stuff them into a 911. What's cool about this though, Dad, is, you know, we talked about the similarities to the Urus. This is 650 ho horsepower. The Urus, 657. So it's not like, you know, that's a car with double the horsepower. Certainly you have a huge um, price gap between the two, but I think visually this car looks better than the Lamborghini. I think it looks better than the Audi. I think it's uh, a, a really attractive design. You know, the old kind was pretty rounded, pretty bubbly. This new one, very angular, very, very kind of um, deliberate in its creases. Now there are what? half a dozen different variations. It starts with a, a six cylinder turbo that starts at about $80,000. And then what are the other variants of this? Yeah, so there's the e-hybrid Cayenne, which is the V6 in the hybrid system. There's the new Cayenne S, which has brought back the twin turbo V8. And then um, there's kind of a big gap right now in the lineup as we go into the 2024 model year to this car, the Turbo GT. But um, I'm thinking that we're gonna see some future models down the road, which will fill that gap. But this Turbo GT really brings all the performance bells and whistles. And you see that right there with the wheels. It's riding on 22s, Tommy. And look at those brakes. Yeah. So you got carbon ceramic brakes, the yellow brake calipers wrapped in these Pirelli Corsa P0 tires. Now, the, the, the tires on this car are wider by about an inch than the Cayenne S, which is the second highest performance lineup in the lineup currently. And um, I mean, just absolutely radical stuff on a crossover SUV. You know, look at the size of those carbon ceramics. Here's something interesting. Uh, here's an interesting number, 17, as in 17 millimeters. That's how much lower this is than the other Cayennes. Yeah, so uh, we're riding on adaptive air suspension on this model. Uh, we got the, the carbon fiber mirror caps, yeah, yeah, that's carbon real. fiber roof. Yeah, that's real too. I love this little uh, winglet on the side here, huh? Yeah, that's you pretty got cool. the dual spoilers. The Turbo GT actually gets a larger um, duckbill spoiler in the rear for added aerodynamics. Now out back, some changes on the 24 model year. Of course, continuous LED light bar, turbo GT badging, the license plate has moved lower down on the fascia, and then of course the dual mounted center exhausts. Hey, can I go start up and do a little bit of a rev for you? Yeah, you're gonna put it in the loud mode on the exhaust setting? I will put it in the loud mode, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna scare the kids, Tommy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here I am inside the car. I'm starting it up. Oh yes. Are you ready, Tommy? I'm putting it in the Sport Plus mode. Yep. Which is the loudest mode. So let's go scare the locals. Don't scare the locals. I'm gonna scare the locals. Ready? Yep. Did that scare the locals? You know, it sounds good, but it's not that crazy loud on the outside. Really? You wanna try the quiet mode? Yeah, I'll just put it in the normal mode. All right, put it in the normal mode. It 
definitely a difference, but neither mode are gonna, you know, stop the city of Pasadena in their, in their heels. But, you know, I think what's nice about this, right, is the Turbo GT is this new trim that really differentiates this particular Cayenne from every other version because there are so many configurations, so many options. And now there's a lightweight package, right? You can get on the S, which is like the little baby Turbo GT, but this car tells the world that you went for the max performance available in the Cayenne. Hey, come on, jump in here. Uh, let's show them the inside. So the inside of this car is really where we start to see the big changes for the 2024 model year. Do you mind flipping it around? Yeah, it's got the ashtray in Look it. Look at that. It's got the ashtray, dude. This has a smoker package. Must be for the uh, Chinese, because <laughs> I think they still smoke in China. We do more vaping, unfortunately, here now. But yeah, uh, you know, the thing about Porsche is, of course, is you can option it out uh, to your heart's content. So things like this carbon fiber can be changed, interior can be changed, of course, a chrono package, which uh, gets you launch control. Let's spin it around so sure. I'm not filming these people having their really in-depth conversation. All right, I'm gonna put it into drive, and the way that you do that is the same way you would do a Taycan. Yep, That's got, a, yeah, exactly. got that new shifter position up there on the dash. Yep. Yep. So, funny you mentioned a Taycan, because this interior has been modeled after that vehicle and shares a lot of components with that vehicle. Um, the, the layout here with these flat screens and then the curved instrument cluster, that 12.6 inch curved screen. Um, as you mentioned, that continuous bar across the dash. All of this now, as you talked about, is customizable. Still have the iconic vertical Cayenne vents down there. Still the iconic Cayenne grab handles. Um, but this is new. You've got a 911 style wheel now uh, with the, your different drive mode. So I can show them right there. So you've got normal, you can go to sport, you can go to sport plus. Um, there's even off-road. There's even an off-road one. And then you can see that that raises and lowers the uh, air suspension, of course, and, and off-road raises off -road, it. off-road, you have gravel, mud, sand, and rocks. Yeah. Rocks mode in this. And then if we go into this page, this is really, really cool. Um, you can see the different uh, suspension settings for off-road one and off-road two, and then different terrain modes here. You can even see how it's sending and distributing the power and the torque. So I, I'd really like to get this back to Colorado and um, get it off-road, I think it's pretty wild. But let's go into like the Sport Plus setting here. Um, you can see the different track uh, modes there, the different chassis settings. So it's super configurable. The screen, by the way, quick, easy to use, very simple to understand, has all sorts of different settings and, and functionality in here, which is super easy to find, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, over there updates, and there's even a screen available here, right, Ted? Yeah, you can get a third screen for the passenger, and uh, just like the Jeep, Tommy, the cool thing about that screen is uh, the, the driver can't see it, so the passenger can actually watch uh, movies while the driver is driving. Now, the Porsche key has not changed all that much, right? If you're familiar with Porsche, this is a very similar key that they've had for a long time, and I do love the the fact that buttons and knobs and switches, real ones, are back uh, for your HVAC. So um, yeah, it's very tactile. Yeah, you got these little toggles which feel great. Knurled finish for the temperature, for the fan speed, for the AC mode. You got this great volume knob, so they haven't lost the volume knob. Standard wireless charger now in the Cayenne, and it's actually a little air-conditioned wireless charger. 15 watt, too much piano black, really has a tendency to attract the fingerprints. And dust. And then, um, you know, if you look at the interior, it's not quite as spunky as like the Urus, which we keep mentioning, right? It, it's not it's as, very Germanic. Not as much flair, but the quality in here is exceptional. Yeah, All the materials feel great. I, I would call it business-like. Business-like. This, this is a car for the business of going 189 miles an hour down the Autobahn, Tommy. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, that's the way that Germans build fast cars. You know, the Italians, you'd have a big, like, Lamborghini across the door, you know, with these crazy colors. Not that you can't customize this to your heart's content. Uh, so let's talk about how it drives. Now, um, you know, you're rolling on 22s, right, with high-performance tires. Even with air suspension, it is certainly sporty. Uh, in its most um, comfortable mode. In its most comfortable mode, Let's yeah. Let's go into normal here. Yep. We'll get a sense of the ride quality. We'll put the chassis into normal, we'll put the level on normal. We'll turn the exhaust off for just a sec. And yeah, I mean, it's just not much rubber on these big. Uh, not that much, right? Yeah, on these, in these huge wheels. So it, it does have a tendency to crash a little bit over larger bumps, but this is not intended to be the comfy Cayenne. If you want the comfy Cayenne, get the V6 or the, the hybrid, right? This is still a very livable car. Now the coupe, you do sacrifice some rear seat headroom. Um, you actually fit back there pretty well. We have a video over at TFL car where we tried the, the rear seat room 
and um, believe it or not, your head still has just a little bit of clearance to the ceiling, even at six feet tall. But if you're a little taller than that, you definitely want to look at the standard car. Yeah, so, so this car um, not only shares, you know, a lot of the architecture from the previous generation, it also shares the wheelbase. So you're not getting any more room in here, per se, from the outgoing generation. But what you are getting, especially in the plug-in hybrid, is faster charging speeds and a bigger battery. So if this were a plug-in hybrid, you'd have a 25 kilowatt hour battery, which uh, should give you over 40 miles of all electric range. Now, of course, in this model, we've got the, the top dog powertrain. We got that 650 horsepower engine, and the exhaust note in here does sound great. It's not a, it's not a, um, you know, overwhelming. It's not like you're getting into a Challenger SRT Hellcat and you can't hear your, your yourself think. But in the Sport Plus mode with the exhaust on, you get a great grumble out the back and a very, um, very comfortable seating position. I like that you kind of sit in the car rather than on top of the car. All the gauges are super clear. They're very customizable. Uh, you know, there's a lot of um, great connectivity features in here as well. Yeah, so let's go up in the hills a little bit here above Pasadena. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of the bean, just a little squirt. Uh, and you know, 3.10 to 60 should be pretty quick. <laughs> oh yes, and it is a little quick. In that amount of time, Tommy, I almost, uh, well, I did break the speed limit by not by much. That's not what we do. But yeah, I mean, if you want uh, the handling characteristics of a 911, I'm talking about like razor sharp uh, steering with eye popping brakes. This is certainly the car to go for. This is about as close as you're going to get. Now, certainly the carbon ceramics have their pros and their cons are great on racetracks. They, they do require, you know, some heat in them for them to, to fully work, but actually these are the most livable carbon ceramics I've ever felt. Am I good? Yeah, you're good on my side okay, here. I better then. squirt in here again. Oh, this just never gets old. Some of, <laughs> some of the uh, carbon ceramics I've experienced, you know, are very temperamental, low speed, especially when you first get in them when they're cold, but yeah. these feel pretty good. And um, very rear wheel drive biased all wheel drive system, right? You can definitely tell that Porsche has designed this to be very rear biased, very rear oriented. Um, and uh, that's great, right? It's easy to rotate the car around. The steering, I think, is pretty darn good. It's got the most feel of any in this class. And I also like this car from a visibility standpoint. You know, some of the newer BMWs, the X6 models, you feel like you're in a bit of a cave when you get the coupe, coupe versions. This car, though, you still have these nice big windows, easy to see out of. Yeah, I mean, you know, Porsche is nothing if they're not practical, right? So it's the, let's, let's call it the thinking man's uh, sports. SUV or crossover ver versus the Lamborghini being kind of the, you know, the heart versus the head, uh, if that's a way to look at it. Because this is also significantly cheaper uh, than the Lamborghini. So you're getting the same amount of performance, uh, you know, with uh, the Porsche Crest uh, without necessarily a lot of that. Uh, should we call it Italian machismo or should we just call it Italian style? So one thing I'm not a big fan of with the Turbo GT yep. is you're looking at a 200 plus thousand dollar car. This is a early production one, right? We don't have the sticker on, on us, um, but starts at 196. Give it several options. You're going to be in the 205, 210 region really quickly. Now we were in a, a e-hybrid earlier today that was, you know, low 90s to 100 grand, and it didn't feel, at least from an initial interior standpoint or even a, around town driving standpoint, like it was half the price. So you really pay a premium to get the Turbo GT. You can get the Cayenne experience for a lot less, even like the Cayenne S, right? But you're sacrificing 150 plus almost 200 horsepower for going Cayenne S versus Turbo GT. So if you really want the most capability in terms of acceleration, then you really got to pay in this car. Yeah, and of course you get the uh, like this the, on the left side start stop button. So when you're taking the kids to the uh, soccer game, you can do a Le Mans style start and get there before your neighbors. Uh, that's the idea, of course, of having the, the key on the left versus the key on the right. <laughs> they have gone to a Taycan like uh, gear selector, which has freed up a lot of space here. The other great thing about the Cayenne, which people forget, is that they have a really high towing capacity, 7,700 pounds. No brake controller, though, available through Porsche. Yeah, which is weird because you're going to need one if you're going to be towing this much. And that's every Cayenne model. That's not just this one, 7,700 pounds. Now you're getting, you know, to some serious, like... You're like Tahoe levels of capability. Uh, like, you know, two-horse trailer. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of towing capacity. And, yeah. You know, to have a car that has this level of refinement and track capability but still is able to tow a trailer it's pretty awesome so uh, they have not released the uh, fuel economy numbers yet but you can see here what we're getting we're getting 14.8 well yeah but that's because you keep accelerating up hills i keep doing this you mean 
<laughs> that will bring your average fuel economy down, but it will make your day much better, Tommy. Eight-speed transmission, too quick to respond and always in the right gear. You do have paddle shifters if you want to select them manually. This is just a torque converter eight-speed, right? No fancy dual clutch, and I'm such a fan of these torque converters over the dual clutch, especially in a car like this, which, sure, you can take to the track, but realistically, no one's taking this to the track. And for around town, the torque converter is such a nice thing. Yeah, I think the Germans, like, they all kind of copy themselves. So for a while, their torque converters were, uh, I'm going to go French here, soup de jour, right? Uh, oh, the dual clutches? Yeah, everybody had a dual clutch, and now yeah. the Germans have decided that because they're, and they are, they're really kind of crappy to run uh, in stop-and-go traffic, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're great on the track, but in most conditions, including towing, it's much nicer of a torque converter, so they've all gone back to that, which is great. Um, and, you know, this is a single scroll now, uh, dual turbo. Right, yeah, it's, so the old four liter was a two scroll twin turbo, twin, yep. and now it's dual single scroll turbos. The other thing which I like about this too, Dad, is we've been in a lot of M cars. Yes. Um, Mercedes is better at this, but the M cars are really track focused for daily driving. So you think the AMGs are less track focused? A little bit less in terms yeah. of like like just the seats and the and the, the gear shifts and you know all those are so aggressive in the new M cars. This car is more in line with that AMG where yes it does have that capability but it is comfortable. You know I don't have some weird crotch thing here trying to massage my family jewels. I've just got normal seats that, that are comfortable to commute in and yet are supportive enough to hold me in on a twisty road. Yeah I would say uh, if you love uh, the sound of internal combustion uh, then you might want to look at this car because I think the next one uh, will be all electric uh, even though they might continue to sell an internal combustion variant for a while while they sell the uh, electric one but there's no doubt that the next generation is going to be much more electrified more than just the plug-in hybrid. Mm, I think you're, you're right that uh, and I think they might even perhaps sell them side by side. Yeah. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, so shall we park it and, and, and wrap this up? Do you want me to kind of go sit in the back to see how much room there is? Sure, and then we can look at the trunk as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wish you could get the Turbo GT in the standard non-coupe version, right? You have to get the coupe version if you want the Turbo GT. But uh, that's not such a huge compromise, I guess. No. There's going to be, I'm sure there's going to be a standard turbo car coming soon. Yeah, there, uh, are, there are much worse things than that, Tommy. This is a four-passenger in this configuration, by the way. You can, of course, get the Cayenne in 5, but this version is uh, just a four-passenger, so you don't get the center seat there in the middle. Instead, you get a cubby. Um, we do have the, I think, heated rear seats on this car. Oh, you went to the back. I was waiting I, for I the did, rear seat. Sorry, I did just go to the back. I don't want to show you where we're talking about how much room there is. And it's not a huge compromise. There is a 40-20-40 a split. You also have these buttons to lower the suspension. Which is nice. So you can, you know, yeah. load sink. This is the air suspension. And here in Europe, that's actually the retractable tow ball feature, which we don't get. So Little don't winglets get the there, carbon winglets. Look, they're great. And right, then back seat room. We talked about the headroom a little bit. Yeah, it's I'm not sitting, too bad. I'm, I'm sitting behind myself, so, you know, no... Uh, sunroof in this one so you're gonna have more headroom but it's not bad you know good leg room uh, you know this one uh, has the, the the seating for four right but you can get a five uh, person version of this you've got two USB-C ports right here I believe these if we turned it on will give you heated seats in the back so you have those as well uh, and yeah it's not bad you know uh, I could I could actually see spending some time back here not feeling like I'm in a penalty box all right dad well let's close this up so overall, the car looks great, drives really well, the technology is pretty good. I just, uh, one hang up I have is the price. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Uh, and look, uh, this starts at 3.1 seconds, zero to 60. If you go to the V6, you're probably more like 5.6 seconds. So you're probably losing two seconds. So I guess the question is how much is uh, that smile from really flooring it worth? And how much do you care about having, you know, the biggest, fastest, most powerful Cayenne on the block. Yep. Well, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you want more on this car, check out alltfl.com. We've got silver reviews on a couple different variants. And as always, this has been Tommy. And Roman, thanks. Thanks for watching. And thank you for Porsche for letting us uh, go and uh, test drive this. We shall see you guys next time. And thanks, Tommy, for your help. Ciao.